Welcome to the Positive Profit Podcast. I'm Kara Brothers, dog treat business owner and collector of way too many cute cookie cutters. Do you love to bake treats for your dog and think about starting or growing your own home-based dog treat business, but you're unclear about how to do all the things to make it successful? Sister, I've been there and we've got this. If you want to step into your potential and turn your passion into profit, listen and learn with the other bakers in the pack to get clarity and confidence to bake dog treats from home, make money, and of course, pet all the dogs while you're at it. Give your dog a treat, grab one for yourself, and join our brigade of positive profiteers, and let's dig into the episode. What's up, dog treat bakers? Thank you so much for joining me on the Positive Profit Podcast. Today, I officially bring you my very first episode of the whole show. And if you're watching me on YouTube, that's because I have a podcast channel and a YouTube channel. I am super excited and kind of nervous, but here we go. My name is Kara Brothers and welcome to episode one. I have so many topics to share with you ladies, but first I thought it best to begin right at the very beginning. In this very first episode, I'll explain the origins and the reasons behind what led me to begin a dog treat podcast in the first place. If you have a question for me, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Head over to my website, positiveprofit.com, and that's positive with a paw, P-A-W, click on the podcast tab, and then to the orange button that says send Kara a message to have your question answered on the Positive Profit podcast. Feel free to ask me anything about starting or growing a dog treat business or just leave me a testimony about how I've helped you in some way. So you guys, I'm so thrilled to be finally recording my very first episode of this whole show right now. It's going down. You guys are with me. Thank you so much. This whole endeavor has been a work in progress and definitely a labor of love. And this podcast isn't going to be perfect. Just straight up know that going into it. But, you know, you'll always get the truth from me. And as much helpful information and tactical strategies and value for you as I can possibly bring. Again, I'm Kara Brothers and welcome. A little bit about me. I own a dog treat business in Northern California. I'm married. I have three grown kids, three grand girls and one grand girl on the way at the end of January, and I have one dog. Her name is Chibi, and I have one cat, Meow Meow. (laughs) To go back to the beginning, but not too far back, I've always loved baking. Baking has always been my jam since I joined 4-H when I was like 12 or 13 or something like that. I joined 4-H, and they had this class. It was kind of like a home economics class with, you know, domestic type things, but my favorite one was cooking. And so... The very first thing I ever baked was a peach cobbler. And to have my family eat my peach cobbler when I was just like 12 and they loved it, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Like, I'm a kid and I made this really cool thing. And I was like, hmm, this is pretty good. And then it moved on to chocolate chip cookies that I made for a fair and I won a ribbon. And really, it was from there that I thought, okay. I like baking. It makes people happy. It's delicious. From there, I was like, ooh, I'm on to a good thing. I also owned a cupcake side gig into my adulthood. I baked cupcakes for family and friends at church, and I got really creative with my cake, my fillings, my frostings, and it was a way that I could work with my hands, and I totally loved it. I ended up baking in a friend's pizzeria. When they would go home at night, I would use their pizza oven to bake cupcakes. Let me tell you, baking cupcakes in a pizzeria oven was not actually ideal, but I got to pay my rent in cupcakes. So, I mean, I couldn't beat that. That's that's how I kept baking through my life was this cupcake business. I wanted a cupcake delivery van that was like, okay, I'm going to make cupcake deliveries in my town. And we got this little tiny van. It's a called a Cushman. They also make scooters, but they had this really tiny, it was like a micro van. It was so adorable. And in the process of getting it registered, we had it up on the way scale and the wiring apparently was faulty and the whole thing caught fire and it just burned. Oh my God, that thing went up in flames. 
as we're trying to register. It was it was heartbreaking. It was embarrassing. And, you know, my cupcake dreams also went up in flames because I never proceeded with the business after that crushing, crushing blow. I moved on, though. And, you know, I just kept baking for family and friends and whatnot. But I got a job as a quality assurance specialist for a massive tech company. Talk about turning it around, right? Well, I worked my way up to supervisor, project manager, then operations manager. And it was really amazing the growth that was happening with this with this new company. It was so exciting. But it was 24-7. As an ops manager, I was working all the time, evenings, weekends, you know, living from my laptop and cell phones, emails all day, meetings all day. And I was drained and exhausted. I'm sure some of you can totally identify. I was living off fast food, so unhealthy, um, and takeout. And, you know, unfortunately, my kids were too. They were, they were teenagers at the time. And basically, whatever processed food, I could just shove in the microwave and zap and eat. So this job just really took a massive toll on my health, my physical health, my mental health. And my creative side, you know, working with my hands and having little projects, which I've always done that had, I didn't realize, you know, how much those things ground you, but I had no time for any of that. And that side of me, that creative side was completely MIA. There was just no time. And I, I honestly, during that really busy time of being an ops manager, I missed out on raising my teenagers in a way that was fair to them. And our relationship really really, really did suffer. So bright spot, I got laid off, (laughs) which I mean, usually those things don't go hand in hand, but getting laid off really forced me to stop. It forced me to slow down at least. And I was very thankful at that moment because I was ready for it to happen because I was done. God stepped into my life in a really big way about two years ago. And it totally transformed my life. I found myself ready at that point to make a shift and go in a completely different direction with my career and with my life. I moved, I got married, and then I thought, well, I want to do something, but I didn't want to go back to corporate America. I didn't want that kind of job anymore. So you know what? I saw saw a course about making money with dog treats, totally the opposite thing. And I thought, okay, I love baking. I love dogs. That seems like a no brainer. And I'd never thought about making treats for dogs. So this was very interesting to me. And I took paid the money. I took the course. Also, I should point out that at my at the time and still today, (laughs) nobody in my town was making dog treats. It was absolutely mind boggling. I know that is not the case everywhere. It is still, though, in a lot of places, it's just dog trees aren't a thing. I don't know why. Anyway, I thought, "Mm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my learn on. I have a dog treat business, y'all. And I was excited. So once I got the course, I plowed through it. I just spent all my free time just diving into this course to learn all I could. And I was wah, 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 disappointed. I was so disappointed with this course because coming from a background where I taught curriculum to the agents to start off this call center that I had been working on, I realized the material that was in front of me was illogically laid out. It was incomplete. There were things that didn't go anywhere. You know, there were recipes that were included, which was great, but important recipe details were either missing or proportions were wildly incorrect in a lot of these recipes. I didn't walk out with any tactical strategies to to achieve real success. It taught me some things, but you know, it, it was really lacking. I ended up joining their paid Facebook group because you got a month for free, which is great. But if you wanted support for this course, you had to pay every month. So I did. And there were countless posts about how to fix those recipes that we paid for in the course, which was mildly annoying. You know, the recipes should have been right the first time. But so in this Facebook group, it was students helping students, which I love the concept of, you know, your peers getting together and helping one another out because seeing somebody else succeed is so amazing and helping them with their troubleshooting tips and ideas. And I love the whole concept. 
And while this group was students helping students, I just didn't see the value in paying for this Facebook group for peer support or how to fix recipes that should have been in the course or information that we were talking about in the group that should have been included. I ended up seeing a better way forward and I jumped in. I am just not the one to sit there when the light comes on and do nothing. I started my own dog treat bakers Facebook group where other dog treat bakers like me who either had a dog treat business or wanted to start one that we could get together, we could network, we could help each other out for free. We wouldn't have to pay to be in this group to help each other every month. I ended up piecing together what I needed on my own to start my dog treat business. I ended up jumping through all the hoops to get my pet food processor license, which is what which is what the license is called in the state that I live in, California. And I learned as I went along And I worked my butt off. (laughs) You know, I really did. There was no Netflix binging. You know, I really did my homework to to get this thing off the ground. I took that course that began my journey, my dog treat baking journey. But I learned on my own, you know, through research and trial and error and discussion with my peers in my dog treat Facebook group. And I spent a lot of extra money how to learn how to start a dog treat business. I did so many experiments, you guys, along the way to supplement what was in the course. And I get it. The course isn't meant to be the whole Bible of your business. It's meant to get it off the ground. And then as you go along, if you want, you can make other recipes, you know, to supplement it. So that's what I did. And I did a lot of experiments to make frosting and icing that doesn't melt in the heat. And it, If you guys have already made treats and maybe have vended at all in the heat, in that, in the summer heat, y'all, cream cheese frosting is easy to work with. It's beautifully, it pipes beautifully, but I'll tell you what, it slides right off and melts in the heat. So I was like, no, that is not going to work, especially with how hot it gets here. So I was successful in making icing and, and frosting that doesn't melt. I also made my own line of dog safe sprinkles without sugar. I ended up creating, you know, treats that didn't have artificial flavor or coloring. I used colors that came from fruit and veggie powders instead of that terrible artificial coloring. So that's also something that lacked in the course that wasn't a factor for them. That is everything to me having an all natural dog treat business and then having it spilling over to this podcast is what I want to teach others is they can make dog treats without sugar. They can make icing and and frosting that doesn't use artificial color. They don't need preservatives. There's a way to do things naturally. For me personally, and a lot of other paw parents, the health of their dog, just like for themselves, has become increasingly important. And That just translates into the types of treats that they choose for them. We all want our pets to live long and happy lives. My dog is my child, you know, because my kids are grown. So I know that's the case for a lot of people and I want her to live forever. (laughs) So having an all natural philosophy for my dog treat business is something that wasn't found in the course, but I feel super strongly about. It's the reason why I had to work around using the popular icing (laughs) that's made from yogurt chips as well. So we had the cream cheese, we had the yogurt chips, both melt. Carob chips melt. Also yogurt chips, they were so prevalent in this course and they're filled with sugar and palm kernel oil as the first two ingredients. Like that's not good. That's not going to be good for your dog. And titanium dioxide. I mean, please, this stuff is terrible. I learned how to make icing on my own that doesn't melt, the sprinkles without sugar, and using colors from nature. My business grossed over $25,000. The dog treat baker group that I set up, y'all, I started this Facebook group in March of this year with 25 people. That's it. 25 people. We are about 10 people shy of 4,000. It's amazing how this group has grown. I am passionate about helping other women get their dog treat business off of the ground and being just being around other like-minded dog loving mamas who get it 
and to talk shop. I mean, your husband and your kids don't care about the the cupcakes you made or that you finally found a recipe for gluten-free dog treats that doesn't crumble. I mean, they don't give two craps about the new cookie cutter you got. But all, all of us sure do. We, we love that. So the reason I started the podcast, y'all, there is not another podcast like this in the world that I know of. It's so super micro-niched. Now, for YouTube, there might be another YouTube channel that is about how to start a dog treat business from home. I don't know of one because I haven't, I haven't looked. But when I saw a new way forward and the light came on for me, you guys, I wanted to share all the things with you that I wish I had been taught in that dog treat bakery course so you could feel confident and prepared to start a profitable at home, all natural dog treat business of your own. I am so like amped up and excited to support you and turning your passion into profit. And I've got so much good stuff lined up. Episodes I just cannot seem to record and write down fast enough. I cannot wait. I know that God placed his hand on my life and has pushed me to this new direction to help women monetize their passions of baking treats for dogs, conquering their fears, and really breaking free of whatever is holding them back and giving them the tools to be successful as a female entrepreneur working from home, balancing a family, balancing life, and your dog, right? For me, it's a no-brainer. I love helping other bakers overcome their hurdles and learn new things. It's a little bit of, I got this, right? You know, and also a little bit of just totally leaping into the unknown. I figure it's also a lot of why not? Why not just grab the horns, make the jump, figure it out and see what happens. As soon as I decided I was going to start this podcast to help other women learn the business, my mind was literally flooded with ideas. I just, I couldn't stop writing them down and coming up with titles and it was just crazy and it was a total God thing. I have got tons of recipes, troubleshooting techniques for your tricky dough, your tricky icing, how to present your treats in the best way possible with different kinds of packaging, logos, labels, how to make your own, how to sell your treats in person at markets, online, how to set up for a farmer's market, how much to take to a farmer's market, right? Also how to promote them on social media and how to get paid. I've got all the other topics about the business end of things, right? You know, how to get all that set up and going. Plus, I have a whole list of really cool guests, you guys. I've written down some cool names and I am just praying they'll want to come on the show. So please say a little prayer for me so we can hear from these guests and have them share their specific niche with you so you can get all that great content to help you start your business. And I'm going to be sharing with you and pouring into you every single week. I just can't wait to begin this journey with you. I guess with that, my podcast baby is officially born now and I can't wait to connect with you. If you have stories, tips, questions to share, or maybe you just want to tell me what treats you're working on, leave me a voice message on my website. Go to positiveprofit.com. That's positive with a P-A-W positiveprofit.com. While you're there, sign up for emails. I have got a free gift for you. So make sure you sign up for emails. Leave me a message. You guys, it has been so fun hanging out with you and sharing my passion for home-based dog treat bakeries with you. If you've learned something on this episode or you've gotten to know me better on this podcast and you still like me, <laughs> I would love, love, love it if you would just go on Apple Podcasts and leave me a review for the show. It'll take you less than a minute. I have lots of cool stuff in store for you. I would appreciate it so much. And until next time, you guys, keep those ovens warm and don't forget to treat yourself well. Happy baking and I'll see you next time. Hey, sis, one quick thing before you go. If this podcast episode helped or blessed you in some way, the number one way you can pay it forward is to head over to Apple Podcasts and search for my show, Positive Profit. Leave me a review and subscribe to the channel. Your heartfelt messages of gratitude impact me so much and bring me such massive joy. I would be so appreciative. 
Don't forget to join the free Facebook community at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash start a dog treat business and send me your juicy questions at positiveprofit.com. I positively appreciate you and look forward to connecting with you again soon. Until then, don't forget to treat yourself well.